singing our call to worship. Our call to worship is hymn number 12. Hymn number 12, Great is the Lord. Let's stand together as we sing. Great is the Lord, He is holy and just. By His power we trust in His love. Great is the Lord, He is faithful and true. By His mercy He proves He is love. Great is the Lord and worthy of glory. Great is the Lord and worthy of praise. Great is the Lord, now lift up your voice. Now lift up your voice. Maybe see it. Good morning once again. Thank you for being here this morning as we have gathered together at Marigold Baptist to, to do just that, to, uh, to worship the greatness of, of our God and King Jesus Christ. Before we continue with our time of worship, we have some announcements we'd like to make. Uh, first, if there are any visitors here, welcome especially to you guys. Uh, if y'all would, uh, we ask that you would fill out this little perforated flap in your bulletin and drop it in the offering plate in the back of the sanctuary. That will be your offering to us this morning. That is a way for us as a church to get to know you better, uh, to see if there's any way that we can pray for you or if you might need anything from us. Uh, that is uh, how we can communicate for now. This afternoon at 4 p.m., there is a deacons meeting, so uh, deacons, please remember uh, to be here for that. And then following that at 5 p.m. is our monthly church business meeting. So we invite all of our members to be here for that. I will meet downstairs in Brother Paul's Sunday school room. Next Sunday morning is our graduate recognition service. Uh, we will be honoring Sarah Beth Morgan as she graduates from Cleveland Central. So please uh, make plans to be here for that. And then also uh, next Sunday, uh, there will be an interest meeting for our planned trip to the Creation Museum and the Ark Encounter in Williamsburg, Kentucky. Uh, that trip will be July 14th to the 17th. We'll be leaving on a Thursday and coming back on a Sunday. Uh, so if you're interested, please let me know. Uh, and then there is a meeting next Sunday morning following the morning worship service. With that said, Let's pray together and we will continue our time of worship. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for who you are. Father, we thank you for everything you've done for us. We thank you for every good thing, every blessing you've, you've given us, Father. Father, I pray right now that you would take over this service, God. I pray that you would have your way with it. I pray that you would pierce our hearts. I pray that you would show us where we fail you. But Father, most importantly, we, we ask that you will... Show us grace and mercy as we give the worship back to you that you put in our lungs. Father, we thank you for everything you've given us once again. We say these things, we pray these things in your holy and precious name. Amen. Please note your prayer list in the bulletin. Uh, there are um, a couple of new ones there. And of course, uh, we've got the ones that we continue to pray for. Uh, Brother Tommy Williamson is here today. He, uh, he survived that uh, scare, but got a great report from the doctor, and he's, he's doing great. And Brother Tommy, we're so glad uh, that you got that report. And, and Sherry, I know you're glad too. <laughs> but we're, uh, we're glad you're here with us today. Let's continue to sing uh, our first hymn is hymn number 27, hymn number 27. I told Dalton I was going to introduce this, um, this hymn as one that uh, is one of a, a group that I want us to have our children learn. You know, when I, when I study music and music for children, uh, there's this uh, lady that talks about hymns that children need to know so that they can have a basic understanding of their Christian faith. And this is one of them, you know, all creatures of our God and King. Let's sing together the first, second, and last stanzas.
Hymn number 121, 121, Thou didst leave thy throne. We'll sing the first, second, and last stanzas. <clears throat> Hymn number 122, 122, tell me the story of Jesus, and my voice goes away, you keep on singing, I love to hear the voices from the congregation, <clears throat> we'll sing all three stanzas. <clears throat> story of Jesus right on my heart every word tell me the story most precious sweet 
Thank you, Missy. When uh, Dalton told me about the sermon title today, the song came to my mind, and I started looking for other songs to sing, but I couldn't get this out of my head because when you talk about John 3:16, and when you remember what God did for us, and what in sending His Son to die for us, and what Jesus did for us, and what He gives us. This song just, just, just came to mind. I couldn't get it out of my head, so I sang it all day yesterday afternoon, last night, and this morning. And hopefully I can sing it for you. It's, uh, Jesus, we just want to thank you. <clears throat> Jesus, we just want to thank you. Jesus, we just want to thank you. Jesus, we just want to thank you. Thank you for being so good. <clears throat> Jesus, we just want to praise you. Jesus, we just want to praise you. Jesus, we just want to praise you. Praise you for being so good. Jesus, we just want to tell you. Jesus, we just want to tell you. Jesus, we just want to tell you we love you for being so good. Savior, we just want to serve you. Savior, we just want to serve you. Savior, we just want to serve you. Serve you for being so good. <clears throat> Jesus, we know you are coming. Jesus, we know you are coming. Jesus, we know you are coming. Take us to live in your Thank you, Brother David. Hopefully, every day of our lives, we, we thank Jesus for, uh, for what he's done for us. And today, we're going to look at uh, what God has done for us through Jesus. Today, uh, this morning, turn with me in your Bibles to the book of John. Today, we're going to be in chapter 3. We're going to be looking at verses 9 through 16. You probably figured out by now today we're going to be looking at a very familiar but a truly incredible verse in scripture but as we lead up to that verse and as we look at this passage i want us all to do something i want us to look at this verse this passage with fresh and open eyes and hearts as though we have never 
heard them before. Oftentimes when we hear, read, or study familiar verses, especially one like John 3.16, we are tempted to, to gloss over them. Oh, we know what that one says. Everyone's heard that one since they were a little kid. Let's, let's move on to see what else God has for us. That should never happen to a Christian, regardless of what verse is looked at, taught, or studied. Because every single verse in Scripture is important and is the breathed out word of God. And I challenge everyone in this room, self-included, and everyone who's going to be watching online, not to let that happen this morning. With that said, let's jump into our passage. In these verses, there are two things that we see from John. The first thing we see is that God's love allows Christians to believe in him. In our verses today, we pick up immediately where we left off two weeks ago. Last week was Mother's Day. We took a break from John 3. And today we pick up with this conversation between Jesus and a man named Nicodemus. After Jesus explains to Nicodemus that he must be born again to spiritually enter the kingdom of heaven, Nicodemus responds in verse 9. He says, how can these things be? He is truly confused and perplexed at what Jesus is saying to him. And in verse 10, Jesus responds and he kind of rebukes Nicodemus a little bit. He says, are you the teacher of Israel and yet you do not understand these things? Now, Nicodemus was a very educated man. He was a well-respected religious figure and teacher in all of Israel. And when Jesus asks him this question, he is saying, Nicodemus, you of all people, as one of the chief teachers of Israel, should know what I'm telling you. And in verse 11, Jesus says, Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know, and we bear witness to what we have seen. But you do not receive our testimony. As Jesus is saying this, he uses the word you hear in the plural, not only talking about Nicodemus, but all of Israel. And the, the we that he uses here has many different interpretations. As I was looking and reading and preparing and studying, I looked at five different versions of this, and I got five different opinions as to what it meant. Everyone has a different opinion as to what Jesus is talking about when he says we. But given the conversation and what's going on in this time, more than likely what Jesus is talking about, he is referencing both himself and John the Baptist. Because they were the only two people in that day and age who were teaching and preaching the true gospel of God. After Jesus tells Nicodemus that he should understand how to enter the kingdom of God, Jesus tells him, John and I, we know what we're talking about because we've seen it and we lived it. But you and Israel, y'all aren't getting it. And in verse 12, Jesus continues by saying, if I've told you earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? Here, Jesus is making a comparison between things that happen on earth and things that happen in heaven. Now, these earthly matters that Jesus is talking about is a person being born again. What makes it earthly is that it happens while a person is here on earth. Yes, it is a spiritual matter, but it happens when a person is alive here physically. Jesus says, I've told you that a person has to be born again, has to get saved to enter the kingdom of God. And that happens while you're here on earth. And you don't understand or believe me what I'm telling you. Jesus says, if that's the case, Nicodemus, how on earth will you be able to understand 